Hi everyone, thanks for listening to all my presentations. Today I will continue on liver cirrhosis, but I will be limiting myself to the complications of liver cirrhosis. If you haven't listened to the presentation on liver cirrhosis, causes, diagnosis, symptoms and signs, please kindly do. I have that published already. Okay, let's go. Complications. Many of the following complications are due to poorer abstention. And the complications of liver cirrhosis could be ascites, hepatic encephalopathy, hepatopulmonary syndrome, varicella hemorrhage, spontaneous bacterial peritonitis, hepatocellular carcinoma. Others could be hepatorenal syndrome, poral vein thrombosis, cirrhotic cardiomyopathy, hepatic hydrothorax, poral abstensive gastropathy, and hepatic decompensation. What are the possible risk factors for hepatic decompensation? Bleeding, infection. Alcohol intake, sudden medications, dehydration, and constipation. Now, going into specific complication. Spontaneous bacterial peritonitis will occur only when there is pre-existing ascitic fluid. Before we can say this is spontaneous bacterial peritonitis, there must be no intra-abdominal source of sources. For example, no perforated viscous, no trauma from the outside penetrating through the abdomen, no. And this will also be seen in end-stage liver disease. So before we can say, oh, there is spontaneous bacterial peritonitis, there is pre existing ascitic fluid, no intra abdominal uh, source of sources, and no external source as well. There is liver disease already occurring and is even a sign of end stage liver disease. What are the symptoms? Spontaneous bacterial peritonitis could be asymptomatic in some patients, and when there are symptoms, the symptoms could be fever abdominal pain, abdominal tendon, tenderness, and ultra level of consciousness. How do we make the diagnosis of spontaneous bacterial peritonitis? We can get the acetic fluid for microscopy, culture, and sensitivity. Then we will likely be faced with increased acetic fluid with polymorphonuclear cells, greater than or equal to 250 cells per cubic millimeter. Here, that is in spontaneous bacterial peritonitis, mortality is pretty high. Hepatic hydrotorus. Hydrotorus, because pleural effusion will occur through the acetic fluid, getting into the pleural space. And why that? Once there is a defect in the diaphragm, and this will occur mostly on the right. That was obvious because the liver is right on the right. Okay? How do we treat this? You can use diuretics. Advise that the patient should take less sodium. To ascendancies or transjugular, intrahepatic, portal system in shunt could be embarked upon. Please no chest tube here. Hepatic adulterous, mm -hmm. no chest tube. Why that? It can result in loss of protein, loss of electrolytes, can lead to infection, there might be renal failure, and possibly bleeding also. Heptopulmonary syndrome. 
Here, there will be liver disease, particularly liver cirrhosis, that is associated with increased alveoli arterial gradient and intrapulmonary vascular dilatations. Will be faced with ventilation perfusion mismatch. Mm -hmm. Those in the school of respiratory uh, studies will understand that this is familiar, right? Ventilation perfusion mismatch is found in, do you want to tell me? Pulmonary embolism, right? There will be diaphragmatic elevation and aposemia. There is no shortcut to it. The best treatment is liver transplantation. And portopulmonary abstention. Further abstention is occurring here with pulmonary abstention. This will be found in 2% of liver cirrhosis. The clinical features will include fatigue, dyspnea, edema, chest pain, and syncope. And the best way to make the diagnosis is echo. We can treat here by you know, having definitive treatment that is liver transplantation because it can't be cured with medications. Let me repeat. You've made your diagnosis with echo. You can't use any medication to handle this condition. The definitive treatment is liver transplantation. Now, cirrhotic cardiomyopathy. 50% will have features of cardiac dysfunction. There will be normal or increased cardiac output. A likelihood of increased contractility at rest, with or without electrophysiological anomalies. How then do we make the diagnosis? Chest X-ray, echo, EKG, and cardiac enzymes. You can treat with the help of cardiologists and gastroenterologists. So there won't be any response to medications or stress test. And of course, somebody will suggest liver transplantation. Hepatic encephalopathy. We're all familiar with this, right? Mm -hmm. This is a reversible neuropsychiatric anomaly with insomnia or hypersomnia initially. Later on, there will be asteresis. There will be hyperreflexia of due tendon reflexes. There could be transient cerebral posturing. And the treatment here will be to address predisposing conditions like spontaneous bacterial peritonitis or varicella hemorrhage. We will give lactulose. We will give rivazimine. Check my channel for full presentation on lactose. You will have the entire picture of how you can use it. And of course, there will be another publication or presentation on rivazimine in the next few weeks or months. Poravein thrombosis. Pora vein thrombosis can contribute to the development of pora abstention from unbalanced hemostasis with slowing pora flow. How do we treat? We treat with anticoagulants. But generally, we have to treat the underlying cause of the cirrhosis before we can completely get out of the problem. And we have to advise, stop the use of alcohol, please. Non-selective beta blockers and vaccinations against hepatitis A and hepatitis B virus will be helpful. We have to avoid certain toxic medications in liver cirrhosis. Acetaminophen must not be taken with alcohol and 
The maximum daily dose of acetaminophen should not be greater than 2 grams, nothing more than that. If not, we run into more problems. We have to advise there should be a limit to over-the-counter medications that the affected individuals could consume. Please no aspirin. No. No other non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs are not allowed. Yes, you can give fentanyl in pain. Yes, you can give hydromorphone. Mm -hmm. If you have to give hydrocodone, then go for the lowest dose and the frequency. Reduce the frequency. If you want to give oxycodone, the same. Lowest dose and reduce the frequency. No meperidine here. No codeine, please. If you must give morphine, you have to reduce the dose to only 50% of the expected dose and not so frequent as well. Osicodone and nalozone combined is not welcome here. Pentazosine with nalozone combined is not welcome here. Remifentanine could be given, yes. Tramadol, no, please. Carbamazepine, no. Remember, people with liver cirrhosis will be dealing with decreased sodium, and carbamazepine could give up on atremia on his own. So, double barrel, right? Gabapentin, yes, you can give that. Nortritiline, yes, you can give. Pregabalin, yes, you can give. In muscle cramps, we can give quinine sulfate, tarine, replace zinc, correct any anomalies as per the electrolytes, and vitamin E. Okay, hernia, bleeding, and electrolyte anomalies. If there's umbilical hernia, repair surgically, please. If you are faced with electrolyte anomalies, please correct. In case of bleeding, we have to treat symptomatically. For example, transfusion as may be necessary. If there is hematemesis, you can give omeprazole or any of the proton pump inhibitors. In case of, of hepatocellular carcinoma, we have to scream. And of course, if you are dealing with major complications that you can handle, you know, with all these measures, get liver transplantation. Prognosis. Is there liver decompensation or decompensated liver? If the answer is yes, then expect increased mortality and survivor in liver cirrhosis with decompensation is less than six months. But if this is liver cirrhosis and is compensated, survivor is greater than 12 years. Child poor classification of liver cirrhosis severity will be published in another day. Men's score for liver cirrhosis will also be addressed in another day. For now, this is the end of the presentation on liver cirrhosis from the causes, the symptoms, the signs, how to make the diagnosis, now to the end of complications. Thanks for listening. Remember to leave comment. Remember to give thumbs up. Remember to subscribe. You can pass comment. Remember to share and subscribe. I appreciate it.